Welcome everyone to Gail Jan Yoga. I'm Gail and today we're going to focus on the core, building more core strength and learning how to be more aware of the core, how to use the core more and how to move from our core. So the core, having a strong core doesn't just mean having those six pack abs. That's actually the superficial, our most superficial muscles, the rectus abdominis, but it means our abdominal muscles, our back muscles, shoulder muscles, glutes, hips. Like how can we integrate our core? How can we tap into the essence of who we are, of our heart, of what drives us, of the most important things? And our core muscles are some of our deepest muscles, some of our largest muscles. And it's important to have a, a strong core to protect your back, to be able to move with grace, to be able to do really anything that we are doing in our lives besides sitting, and to be able to do it with grace and ease. So core work, um, we have to move with our breath. Uh, it's a lot about hugging the midline. So thinking of hugging in from the right and left side, and if you drew a line from the center of your eyes down your nose, with your belly button, that would be the core. So there's a hugging in aspect, not only from side to side, but from top to bottom. So hugging in right around to like our, um, this solar plexus area, right around the belly area, like hugging from front to back and engaging our muscles. So uh, there's lots, there's so many different ways to work on the core. I'm gonna try and do, show you some simple basic things and, and then we'll practice some poses and see how they feel like with more awareness of the core, maybe more sensation of utilizing those core muscles. So let's start on our backs. Um, grab two blocks if you don't have them handy. And we're gonna start on our backs. Hug your knees onto your chest and just start by giving your back a gentle massage. You can move your knees around in circles, look directions. Then place your feet on the floor and think of letting your whole back rest on the floor. So belly down, belly towards the spine, so that there's no space under your ribs or under your low back. And we talk a lot about belly to the spine. So this action of drawing the belly, in this case on the floor, down toward the floor, if we were in a different position, they couldn't, like if I was on my uh, hands and knees, it would be toward the sky, but belly toward the spine, and also a little bit of a scooping down and a lifting up towards our sternum. So you can think of the pelvic area drawing in, back, and upwards towards the sternum area, towards the ribs. So first, let's just let the back relax and get used to that feeling. And bring your knees up and place your hands on your knees, on your thighs, sorry, and think of just pressing your, trying to press your thighs away, but resisting with your thighs. And what you want to feel is that your belly goes to the floor and you start to feel those deeper core muscles being engaged. If this looks easy, but if you're really pressing and resisting, it's, <laughs> it's not that easy, <laughs> but it's easy to do correctly. So you wouldn't want to have your back arched like this, space here, you want no space, press down. Then take your blocks, and take one block, place it between your feet, alongside the feet, and squeeze the block with your feet. And take the other block between your hands. So I'm not holding the block with my fingers. I'm just holding it by pressing it in. Bring that block over your shoulders. And still keep drawing your belly towards your spine and drawing the low ribs in. And start to squeeze the blocks. Not so hard that you're tensing your neck, but you're, you're actually feeling a lot of these deeper core muscles engaging. And start to lift your legs up a little bit and even lift your arms up a little bit and squeeze the blocks, keep pressing your belly toward the floor. You don't wanna have any pain in your back, so you can always bring your legs up a little bit higher, your arms up a little bit higher. And as you get more advanced, you can lower them down. Good. And relax. So hopefully you have this like sense of engagement and warming 
all around your stomach, around your back, um, up into the chest. And so this is what we call hugging the midline. So I'm going to do that. We're going to do that again. So flex your feet, squeeze the block with your feet. Squeeze the block with your hands and pull your belly toward your spine. Imagine that you're sucking your, your guts up under your rib cage. <laughs> and then squeeze in, see if you can lift up a little bit. Breathe. Good. And lower down and release. Let's put the blocks to the side. For now. Then we'll do something that's a little more familiar, a variation on doing those bicycle reps. So interlace your fingers behind your head. Bring your feet up over your hips. Press your belly toward the floor. Take a deep inhale here, and on your exhale, bend your left knee, straighten your right leg, and twist your right elbow towards your left knee. Inhale, take a little rest, bring your feet back over your hips. And then exhale, if you can, lift both shoulders off the floor and think of bringing your left elbow towards the inside of your right knee. Left leg is stretching out nice and long. Inhale back to center and exhale twist. So we're going to go back and forth. So until you build up strength, you could keep like your right shoulder on the floor when your right knee is bent. And get a little rest, we come back up. And then as you want to challenge yourself more, get a little stronger, keep both those shoulders off the floor when you twist. And lower back down. So even though this is a little bit of a different variation of bicycle rep, if you really, like, I'm not even using my hands that much. I'm trying to get into those deeper core muscles. And... <laughs> This will definitely warm you up on a cold winter day. And we're warming up from the inside. So we'll go a couple more times. If you start feeling any back pain, you definitely want to stop. And a lot of times you'll get back pain if you let your back arch. So one more time each side. Good, and relax. Oh. Okay, so you can bring your feet a little wider than your hips and just let your knees rest in on each other. Place your hands on your belly. Take some deep, full breaths, really focusing on the exhalation and relaxing and letting go. And open your arms out to the side, open your knees up, keep your feet nice and wide, and then just slowly, a little bit of windshield wiping action, or knees from side to side. Trying to go slowly so that you're not just whipping your legs around. And letting your belly relax. And a lot of times when we've done a lot of contraction work on our belly, it's nice to balance that with stretching out the belly. A great way to do that is bridge pose. So place your hands by your sides. You want your feet to be hip distance apart and feel like you're turning your heels out a little bit because they tend to go in. And lift and spread your toes just to activate the legs. Feel that contact of all four corners of your feet on the floor. Keep the belly drawing back a little bit even as we lift up. So take a big inhale, and as you exhale, press into your feet, squeeze your knees towards each other, pull your belly towards your spine, and see if you can lift up from your upper back. So a lot of times the knees want to splay out, you want to keep them in. Not to touch, but just not to move out. And then on exhale, just start to lower your upper back, very slowly and consciously, until your hips finally reach the floor. And we'll do that one more time. So press into your feet, lift up to your hips. If you want, you can walk your shoulders in towards each other and interlace your fingers. 
Press your arms into the floor. Squeeze your thighs towards each other. Lift up through the back of your heart. And keep the belly drawing towards your spine. And again, slowly release. Relax and lower down. Hug your knees and your chest. And we'll rock up onto our hands and knees. So come onto your hands and knees. Spread the fingers nice and wide. And whenever we are going to be working on our hands, which is most of the time, this is what every time I do a yoga practice, unless I was doing something totally restorative, be on my hands at least part of the time. So it's always good to do some little wrist warm-ups. So start to circle around your hands. Don't have to spend a lot of time. Maybe just one or two minutes will really help. You're going to take your fingers towards your knees or to the outside and rock back and forth. Feel that stretch in your fingers and in the wrists. So the closer your hands are to your knees, it's a little bit of a gentler stretch. The further away, it's more of a stretch. So you can do it trying to keep the heels of your hands down. You can let them come up a little bit. It's more about being aware. And sit back on your heels, shake out your hands. Give them a vigorous shake. That feels good. Interlace the fingers, rotate the palms out and up and back. And lower down, interlace the fingers and slow figure eights. I'm not trying to rush, although I usually find myself that I'm rushing a little bit, so I'm just trying to slow it down. And this is really my favorite one. So bring the back of your hands to the floor. Fingers facing your knees. If that's not possible, like if you end up like this and that's as far as you can go, then bend your elbows and bring your fingers in. And straighten the arms, bend the elbows. If your fingers are pointing towards your knees, rock forward and back. And even here, you can start working on keeping your belly hugging towards your spine. We're focusing more on the low belly hugging towards the spine so that there still can be movement in your belly as you breathe. You come back to a neutral position, tuck your toes and stretch your hips back, downward facing dog. Keep a little soft bend in your knees. So think long spine, belly lifting, drawing in. Grab the floor with your fingertips. And then inhale, reach your right leg up. Exhale, bend your knee. Hug your knee into your chest. Keep your knee as high as you can. Press into the floor. See if you can tap your tricep. And inhale, stretch back. Press out through the big tomo. Exhale, come in. Tap. And inhale, lower your knee down. And exhale, pull it back up. Inhale, lower it down. Exhale, pull it back up. Step back to your down dog. We'll do the same thing with the left leg. So switch the left leg up. Draw that belly in. Keep a little lift. And then you round your spine as you bring your knee in. Try and keep it high. So press the floor with your hands. Tap your knee to your elbow. And stretch your leg back again. Exhale, hug it in. Keep it high. And then lower down. Exhale, pull it up. Inhale, lower it down. Exhale, pull it up. And stretch back to your down dog. Hmm. Again, think of keeping that belly lifting, drawing in and up. And then hug your forearms in toward, towards each other. Bend the elbows a little bit. Keep squeezing the arms in. See if you can lower your arms to the floor. Elbows to the floor. Bend your knees as much as you need to. Press into your hands. Look a little bit forward, so don't look back at your feet. Look forward of your elbows. And then lower your knees a little bit and lift up. Lower and lift. You might be able to walk your feet in a little bit. Press your chest back towards your thighs. And walk your feet back. Lower onto your belly. And lace your fingers behind your back. Lift up through the shoulder blades. Squeeze your legs towards each other. And then 
reach your arms back, pull the belly back, lift your legs up. And then exhale, lower down, bring your arms forward. Imagine you've got that block in between your hands, so hug your hands in towards each other. Press the inner edges of your feet towards each other. And then inhale, lift up. And exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift up. Reach your arms behind you, thumbs facing up. And exhale, bring your hands forward. Inhale, lift up, reach the arms back. Exhale, come forward. Inhale, reach your arms back. Exhale, come forward. One more time, inhale, reach back. This time, bring your hands by your ribs. Squeeze your shoulder blades towards each other. Hug your legs in. Press your feet down. Curl up into your cobra. Keep pressing down through your feet. Lower halfway down. Pick your hands up. So we're working the core muscles of the back now. Well, actually, they all work together. <laughs> so funny because it seems like so much of the time we want to separate like ourselves so that we stand out or separate all these parts of our bodies, which they are kind of in parts, but they're also very connected with each other. So resting back in child's pose. And come on forward onto your hands and knees. We'll do a little bit of cat-cow. So as you inhale, keep your belly lifted, but press the back of your shoulder blades forward and really trying to get into the upper back. So let the shoulder blades squeeze towards each other. And as you exhale, literally push into the floor, like as if you wanted to push the floor away. And let your back round. And inhale, come forward. Touch your toes. Exhale, push into the floor. Let your knees just hover. So let your knees just hover like an inch off the floor. And then exhale, come forward. Mm. No, I should have said inhale more. Exhale, round spine. Inhale, chest forward. Exhale, round. One more, inhale forward. Exhale, round. Lower the knees. And do a couple more cat cows with the knees down. Notice maybe you're starting to feel a little more open and fluid. And then walk your hands forward, bring your belly to the floor, arms to the floor. And we're going to focus on forearm plank. This is like one of my favorite poses and also one of my least favorite poses because it's very challenging, but I feel it's a great way to build up core strength and it's a pretty safe way. So you want to have that fullness in your back so that there's no like big arch in your back, but there's a belly toward the spine. Keep the low back relatively long. Another thing that happens is because our shoulders are right over the elbows, elbows will tend to take all the weight, but we want to try and distribute that weight into our hands. Also, a lot of people tend to start with their elbows back. So have your elbows underneath your shoulders or even a little bit forward. And then press into your hands enough just to let the elbows lift a little teeny bit. So just a little bit and notice how that starts to turn on your core. Blow the elbows down, elbows down. Tuck your toes. And first we're going to keep our knees on the floor just to feel what it's like to really get the action of the ribs hugging in, the belly drawing in and up, the hands pressing down. So press into your hands to lift your ribs, lift your hips, lift your thighs. And then think of drawing the ribs in, stretching your tailbone towards your heels and your heart forward in the direction of your hands. Push into the hands. So it may not look like I'm doing or much of anything, but if you're doing this with me, in the same way that I'm describing, you'll feel a lot of effort and a lot of strength being built. Good. Lower down. Take a little rest. Bend your knees. Bring your feet back and forth. And come back onto your forms again. And this time we'll lift our knees up. 
but we're gonna do everything up, you know, the hips up uh, first, hips and thighs up first. So press into your hands again, contract the belly, lift up, hug in, stretch your chest forward, heels back, and then just lift your knees up. And try to balance the play of hugging the ribs in so the back fills up, stretching the chest forward and the heels back, and pressing into your hands. And then try to relax your neck, squeeze those thighs, really make the legs work here. Lift up through your belly. Good, then we'll lower down. Rest your forehead on your hands. If you like, you can bend your knees and kind of wiggle your legs from side to side. And come back up onto your forearms. And we'll go through dolphin prep that we did earlier on our forms with our hips lifted and into downward facing dog from there. So press into your hands, hug in, come into your forearm plank and start to walk your feet in, bend your knees and stretch your hips back. So keep the knees bent and keep the belly nice and lifted back strong. And press into your hands just like we just did a moment ago um, preparing for forearm plank. And see if you can lift the elbows up coming into downward facing dog. And let's take a couple breaths here. You can bend and straighten your knees. You can shift your hips from side to side. You could stretch out the calves. And inhale, roll forward into your plank pose. Grip the floor with your hands. And we'll just hold plank pose here. I'm trying to keep the back nice and full and again here there's different variations just different subtle variations so i could do a really uh, hollow bodied plank pose or i could try and balance that out a little bit with stretching the heart forward tailbone back but what i don't want is this kind of saggy back so ribs draw in belly draws in hands press down legs squeeze in Bend your knees, stretch back to your down dog. So in down dog, you don't have to use your, your abs that much. Like you could just hang out here, but it's not how you're gonna develop the healthiest habits for yourself. So lift your belly up, squeeze your ribs in, press down into your hands, squeeze the arms toward each other, wrap your triceps back. And then lift it through the hips, and then maybe start to press your thighs back. So I did a, a video on love your down dog. And there's, you can get more detail about your down dog, but down dog should feel nice and light and easy. Good. Inhale, reach your right leg up. Now to step your leg forward to your hands, it's doing what we just did earlier. So bend your knee. The more you can bring your knee up into your chest and round through your back, Keep lifting up, pressing the hands down, look forward, and then you can even come up onto your fingertips. That'll give you more space. Bring your foot forward for your lunge. In order to feel steady in your lunge, keep the back heel lifted, hug your legs in, draw the belly in, reach your hands back. Keep the belly drawing in, and then inhale, rise up. Take a couple breaths here. Find those places that you can relax into, and the places where you want to stay strong. Now lower your hands back to the floor, and step back, downward facing dog. So, stepping your foot forward and not getting stuck here, is a matter of being able to lift up through your back and hug in that squeezing in action that we did. If you want to start challenging yourself, don't come up on your fingertips, keep your palm down. That's what I've been working on. And to get your foot all the way forward is, is challenging that way, but it really builds up. It's a great way. It's a fun way to build up some deeper core strength. So inhale, reach your left leg up. Come up onto your right tippy toes. Hug your knee into your chest. Keep squeezing it in, 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 in. Come forward. Look forward. Step your foot down. Squeeze your inner thighs toward each other. Lift up through the belly. Reach your arms back. And inhale, rise up. 
Steady yourself with your breath. Yeah, then lower your hands down and step back, downward facing dog. Then you can pedal out your feet. Just do one more little challenging um, core strength pose. So come into a plank pose. Lift your right leg up. And you can flex your feet or point your toes. But keep the belly nice and lifted. Keep your leg nice and long. And we'll just hold here. And lower your leg down. Same thing, second side. So. Don't lift your leg by lifting your hip and shifting. Just see if you can lift the inner thigh. Squeeze in, lift up. Just like forearm plank, point or flex your feet. Breathe. And you lower your leg down. And actually, I'm gonna do one more thing. <laughs> so working the glutes, this is a great way to work the glutes. So keep the belly nice and lifted. And then open your leg out to the side and lower it down. And lift it up. Try not to lean way over to the right. In the beginning you can, but as you build up strength, try and keep your uh, right hip over your right knee. And lift and lower. Try not to let the heel come up. Try and keep the knee and the foot about the same height. So then keep the knee lifted, straighten your leg, and bend the knee. And straighten, and bend, straighten, lower your foot to the floor, lift the inner arch so the whole bottom out to your foot's on the floor, and just gently pulse back and forth. Move back in, do the other side. So try not to lean too much, but stay centered over your leg, lift the knee and the foot, and lower down to hover, and open up, and lower down, and lift, and lower, lift, and lower. This time we'll straighten the leg. So lift your knee up, straighten the leg, Try to keep that leg lifted. Bend your knee again and straighten. And hug in and straighten. Lower your foot to the floor. Lift the inner arch. Gentle rocking back and forth. And come back and stretch back into your down dog. Nice and long, keep that belly lifted. So in down dog, we want to have a lot of support from our core. And we don't want to just be leaning into our hands. We want to keep the shoulders nice and long and strong. And lift up to your heels, bend your knees, and this time we'll hop forward. And come into a squat. So just let your hips sink down. See if you can bring your shoulders above your hips, and you can always place a blanket underneath your heels, you can sit on a block. Close your eyes, and even here, keep the belly nice and lifted to support your spine. If you wanna try some more stretches from here, you can take your left hand, reach your right ankle, and stretch your right arm over your ear, look up toward the sky. And switch sides. And one more time each side. And then lower your hips to the floor. Bring your feet to the floor, hands behind your backs, fingers pointed towards your hips, 
But if that doesn't work for your hands, you can have your fingers pointed away. Draw your belly toward your spine. Squeeze your shoulder blades toward each other. Grip the floor with your finger pads and inhale, lift your hips up. Push into your hands, especially the index knuckles of the hands. Stretch your tailbone towards your back of your knees. And exhale, lower down. And inhale, lift up. Press into your hands, squeeze the arms towards each other, squeeze the legs. And then inhale, stretch your heels towards your hips. And then exhale, lift up. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, lift up. Inhale, lower down. Exhale, lift up. And lower your hips back down. And we'll do some of these with one leg. See how that feels. So squeeze the arms in. Press into your feet. Inhale, lift the hips up. And then pick your right knee up, stretch your right leg up, press into your hands, squeeze the legs in, bend your knee, lower your foot down. Keep a little tuck in your chin, keep hugging the arms in towards each other, bring your left knee up, stretch your left leg up, and bend your knee, lower your foot down, lower your hips to the floor, come on to your backs, hug your knees into your chest again. Take some nice deep breaths, and then bring your, hold the back of your thighs, bring your knees wider than your ribs, bring your feet up for happy baby. So hips to the floor, shoulders to the floor, and then wherever you can reach on your legs. For some people, that's gonna be on your calves, some people ankles, some people feet. Just let everything kind of release toward the floor, and start to rock from side to side. Nice shoulder stretches to bring the soles of your feet together. Interlace your fingers around the outside edge of your feet and start to stretch your knees open. And that will actually pull the shoulders off the floor. We're just trying to stretch the shoulders here. And bring the feet back up again for happy baby. Again, rock from side to side. Hug both knees into your chest. And then just hug your right knee in, stretch your left leg out. You can let your left leg reach on the rest on the floor. Really squeeze that right knee in, stretch out through the left toes. Maybe wiggle the toes. And switch sides. And hug both knees in again. Open your arms out to the side. And Actually, you can lift your hips and shift them over to the left and then twist your knees over to the right, turning your head to the left and just let everything relax. Breathe softly. And inhale, bring your knees back up. Lift your hips, shift them over to the right. And twist, bring your knees across to the left. Head turns to the right, let everything relax. Let the shoulders soften, the knees relax. You can always prop your knees up, like with a block in between your knees or underneath the bottom knee. You want to be comfortable here. Back up to center, place your feet on the floor, center your hips, hug your knees in again. Then take one knee in each hand and start to circle the knees, opposite directions. Reverse the direction of the circles. Hug your knees into your chest and then squeeze in, squeeze into a tight little ball. And then an exhale, stretch out into your savasana. So I like to pick my shoulders up and stretch them away from the hips, lower them down. It gives me a little more length in my back and sometimes I'll kind of walk the heels away from the hips. 
And then again, let everything settle into the earth. You can do any little wiggling or dusting that you want. You want to feel completely comfortable in your savasana. Feel the back of your shoulders relaxing. Back of your ribs relaxing. The hips, the thighs, the calves, hands and feet. And focus on your breath and on the exhale, letting go. Feel that internal warmth, almost like an inner glow. I'm turning on those deeper core muscles so that we know where they are, we know who they are, we become familiar with them, and we can use them throughout our practice and throughout our lives, walking around, sitting even. I mean, it's not possible to be conscious of them the whole time, but maybe just checking in more often with them. Maybe taking advantage of their talents, asking them for help or recruiting them. Like you might have to recruit a friend to help you move something, or I don't know, read over what they've written. It's important to be able to ask for help. Just as that's been as important to be able to relax as it is to be able to engage our core. You can stay here as long as you want. But thank you so much for joining me. Namaste.